I'm going to be making roti, which is a word I believe probably derived from the word roti free chicken. This, I would say, it's probably the African way of making um, roast chicken because it's essentially roast chicken but not done in the oven. So I'm using chicken, whole chicken, onions, bay leaves, um, chicken stock and the silver one is also chicken stock is just the cheaper one the supermarket brand mustard salt black pepper garlic um, vinegar oil and potatoes you can also use this vinegar the one behind which is what I always use anyway and this is just an array of seasonings which you can put on this but I'm just going for the traditional old way of doing it so I'm not going to be using any of these seasonings these are just you know cumin, turmeric, mixed spice, cayenne, pepper, paprika, the everyday seasoning what's that, nutmeg, spice, spice all of these uh, um, herb, mixed herb, and this is toothpick. So for my onions, I'm not going to use the toothpicks because I think they're small enough for me to put in the pot hole. But if you have them too big, half them and then use the toothpick to put them in place. So you skewer it through and that just keeps it in place as you would do cabbage. I've washed the chicken and I've tied it back. So the tie string, I take it out and wash inside the chicken and then I put it back on myself. Uh, you can really just figure out a way of how to do it. Um, I firstly just tie the legs and then I just try and put it in out any way. Um, I've done the potatoes. I'm only using two potatoes because we're actually going to divide them, so I'll have four. And okay, so now we're going to season the chicken. I have how many garlic? Is there three, four, five, six? So one of them I've cut in two. That's because I need four to actually put inside the chicken. So we're going to make incisions like this like that and on the legs as well so right about here I've put black pepper on the chicken I've put on the back side and on the, on the I've put on the other side and on the front side so the baby one we put it inside and um, the incisions I sh uh, shown you earlier, oh god, that sounds so, uh, so medical. But um, the, I've put the garlic inside there. So you just push it in and it goes really easily. Um, you put some vinegar. And I'll also make sure to have some of the on the other side. I'm just trying to put some inside the chicken as well. Also the black pepper, I tried my best to make sure inside it goes in there because the black pepper really helps. You know inside of the chicken always tastes funny. And then you put some salt as well. At this stage I'm not going to put the salt cubes because um, we'll be frying this and you just don't want anything to help in the uh, you know, blackening the oil so early because it tends to do that. Then you put some mustard. Be a bit generous with the mustard and also with the mustard. Try and get some inside of the chicken. Um, I am also not putting garlic inside the chicken because it might just fall out and quite frankly I don't really think it does any difference having it inside because the garlic we put into the actual chicken will do the job. Now, for this mustard, I'm going to rub it all over, and then with the plate itself, you know, there's the vinegar there, black pepper, and salt. I'll try and put um, the remaining inside the chicken after I've done the other side. If you see with the onions, I try to leave the top bit. Sorry, I'm not very uh, cookery person, so I don't really know how to call this, but 
I try to leave them on. That is just to help with it not falling apart. Okay, so we season this now and put it in the fridge. I guess it will have about five, ten minutes to marinate in there. So we've rubbed the seasoning all over the chicken on the other side and I've put the remnants here inside the chicken. And um, for the onions, you can see I've left the top bit on as much as I can. That's just going to help with it not falling out and we've cut the potatoes. We still have three garlic cloves there that we'll be using later on. So this goes in the fridge now to marinate. I guess about five, ten minutes that we'll have in there before we start to fry. So now we just start. I'll put the oil in. Excuse those pecs. I was making popcorn last night and I just couldn't get them off. I need to go really heavy on the oil because we are frying a whole big wok of chicken. I'm not even sure if that's enough. I think let me put a little bit more. Oh, that should do actually. Okay, um... The first thing that's going to go in here is the potatoes. I think the oil is hot. It's smoking. It's at five minutes. So now we put in the potatoes. And you want to fry this till it's golden brown. You're not trying to cook it. You just want to coat it, you know, seal it so it doesn't fall apart as well. So fry on high heat. I'm on my highest level, which is six. And you have a golden brown on all sides, or as much as you can on the sides. It's just gone 11 minutes, and um, the potatoes are done. It, it does brown fairly quickly because it's on high heat. So you just want to take them out. Next, you want to put in the onions, and we're going to flash fry these. Okay, the baby has gone in. We're also going to flash fry the garlic. The garlic is good to flash fry because it just releases um, a really good scent and flavor to the oil. And a minute later, they're done to come out. Take the garlic out first, it will start to burn. So that's just what you were after, these coloring. Okay, now we bring in the chicken. Ooh. Okay, so the oil is smoking hot. That's the chicken in there. This one to now pop it inside. And also with this, you want to seal it. So with Still frying on high heat, and you want it to go golden brown on all sides as much as you can.
I always do the top and other top and part first, and then I try and do the sides. So just the one side remaining to burn. So that's the other side now. The other side is brown as well now. Basically all the chicken is brown. I just wanted to brown the other part a little bit more. So I can now see that I have far too much oil that I would want. I have my cup and my spoon ready. So in a minute I'll just take out as much oil as I don't want in there and, you know, dispose of it. So I'm done with frying the chicken and I've also extracted the oil that I didn't want in there. It's all there. I basically have not too much left in there as you can see. Now all of this goes back in here. And do you remember when I was talking about the garlic not putting any into the chicken? That's because eventually it comes out. I mean even the bay leaf somehow comes out. So I just now want to pop everything back in there. And the garlic, the little one. Now there's some oil there. I am going to put some water there and I will add it here, but we also need to add some water in here. And then we go in with our top cubes um, and a little bit more. Um, so I'll put the water in here. Why I wanted to do that was there was the garlic resting there and even the, even the onions. They have so much flavor in them, especially after you fry them. They continue to release their oil. That's why I didn't want to lose out. So my cooker is still on high heat. So now you put that in. And then you want to put in the top cubes. I'm just going to try and put them on top of the onions and later I'll check if they have melted away. And then you want to add some water. Um, with the water, uh, oh, I've also added the black pepper, not too much, just a little. With the water, I'd say about, um, I don't know, two cups. I always say cups, cups, like I'm some professional, but um, I would say I think I put about two of these in here. You can see the water level, and this is what is going to help the chicken cook more. So, I, as I said, it's still on high heat. I will put it down further in. We're at 35 minutes, 36. So, um, okay, we just let this now go on. Now with this, you could already tell that you're not expecting any sort of a gravy because literally there's nothing there. The water is just to help the chicken cook but you would expect a little bit of a sauce because everything does help, does thicken up somehow. I guess the potatoes, the chicken, the onions, you do get a little bit of a thickened sauce but not so much so. So this is something, uh, I'm actually just adding a bit more water. This is something you would need to eat with obviously something else as you do your roast dinner, you know, make make a salad, a potato salad even, even though you have potatoes here already, but you can make a green salad. Some nice baguettes is good as well. I have a video on green salad and um, on potato salad, even on cabbage salad. All those are really nice with it. So, okay, we're just going to let this start cooking now. But at this point, you must cover. So, you cover and leave on high heat. And I will come back to show you when it is at what point that I decide to lower the heat down. So, we're at an hour now. And I would say about every other 15 minutes try and baste the, try and baste the chicken so I just use this one and I just go in you might have a basting tube, a brush, whatever just 
try and put the liquid on it. This helps with the flavor a lot because there's a lot of flavor in here obviously and you just want to keep adding it there to help with the cooking. And also it just keeps the chicken moist as everyone does when you know oven roasting, rotisserie or grilling or whatever else. And this is not sticking at all. I don't have difficult for me to do but you can see I can turn the chicken right round 360 and you can see it's going. Maybe because the pot is you know non-stick I don't know but it's not sticking and everything is still intact the potatoes the onions so we continue on the high heat as well as I said before there are so many seasonings you can do with this chicken and um, I just chose not to do it because I just wanted to do it the way that I learned how to do it, basically. The other thing you could do with this recipe is you could add vegetables, you know, carrots, I don't know, brussels sprouts, etc. to it. it. It's really up to you. And I would imagine this is the point you would want to put them in because you have to gauge how long they would need to cook. You wouldn't want to put them in so early because they'd be really, you know, all the vitamins, minerals would be gone and then they'll just be, you know, not so nice even. So you just go with what you want to do with this. This is a basic way of doing it and then you add whatever else you want. So many people have prices that they cannot live without. I know I have a few that I love to put in every other thing. And you can do that and then I give it the vegetables as I've already said. So just, you know, we are getting to the finishing point really. We're at 137, I'm still on steak. I am now turning this down to two. So not even three, but two. That's because um, I did tell you earlier that every 15 minutes, try and go in there and, you know, stir around. And I also showed you that the chicken wasn't sticking to the bottom. So for me, the way that I know I need to turn the heat down is when the chicken starts to give a bit of resistance when I try to turn it round. It's not a resistance that's actually peeling off the chicken, but you can just tell because the spoon just doesn't swirl it round. So I've turned it down. If you look at the onions as well, it's beginning to come away. It's still intact, but what I, what I mean is the top layer, you know, is loosening a bit. And also, have a look at the liquid. It's virtually, it's virtually ready. To be honest, for me, this chicken is done. But I have this superstitious <laughs> belief because I always cook this chicken at 145. So for me, if it's not 145, I am not turning it off and I always do that. And because I am recording today, I am actually going to leave it another five minutes because I've been opening it up, you know, letting the air come out and all that. So I will actually be turning it off at 150. But this is done. It is so done and I will arrange this nicely on a plate and just for people to see, I will probably cut it up just so you can see there's no blood and all that in there. But this is done. And like I said earlier, obviously you would know what to eat this with. I mean, a salad, baguette, any other thing that you would want to, it's up to you. So let's just leave this now to my superstitious timing, which is 150, 145, but 150 today, and we will take right, it Right, so I'm happy with the timing, and I think everything is done. It's um, 149, and um, I'll just take it out. And that's what you'd have. I've made this a couple of times, I mean, <laughs> a lot of couple of times, and um, sometimes I have a lot less gravy or sauce that I actually do have in here right now. 
don't be worried about that at all. It's just in regards to the quantity of water that you had put in there, it's fine. The water in there, or the liquid, is basically just to help you with the cooking of the chicken. So, if you were thinking that the chicken was done and there was too much water, all you needed to have done was take the liquid out, I mean, a, a good amount of liquid out, and that's fine. So now I'm just I have taken the chicken out and this is what I have in there and quite frankly I am even more than happy with what I have in there. So we've taken the chicken and the onions and potatoes out. I have one whole onion that has remained in itself and the other two seem to have disintegrated, especially one of them. So I have one here and the other one seems to be somewhere in here. I always get that. That's why, in fact, when I know that I really want the onions in there, I always put one extra, which really helps me with the gravy. This is, this is what we have left. And this is exactly what anyone would need, because when you cut the chicken up, you would want a little bit of gravy to put upon the sauce. And this is perfect for me, exact. Anyway, you can see. It's quite thick, and then... The flavor in there, superb, really. So that's the roti chicken all done. Like I said, you would need whatever else you would want to have with this on your dinner table. It's perfect. That's the pot. Everything that was in here is right in there. Everything. You can see we only have a little bit of burn, and I could have even scraped that off. Now for this dish, I am dedicating it to the Jolie Aja. Thank you so much for all your comments, girl. You are so sweet, and I love you. Also to I Love Mata Forever. She is so humble. I love that girl, and I wish you a happy Ramadan and a good Eid. May you be blessed continuously. Also to Mediva Fall. She is she is superb. I love this girl and I absolutely enjoyed reading her comments and I very much dwelled in their comments. So Mediva Fall girl, thank you so much. And to Sexy Star Bright, to Nene Cisse, to Isa the Soul, to Bintaba. I miss you Bintaba. I don't know where you are. And then to Yamago. Yamago also, you seem to have run away. Please do come back very soon. To Anne Peterson. Me and you are going to be chatting a little bit more than you would expect. I chat too much. So I will be contacting you too soon. Also to Proud Kenyan and Sugar Me Haru. Thank you for your comments, and yes, I will try and make some desserts, as I always just do the savouries. Like I said, I don't have much of a sweet tooth, but I will do my best, because this channel is not only for my pleasure, so thank you all. And that, this is just a baby, so it looks a bit awkward. <laughs> thank you ever so much. I have read a few names here, but these names don't amount to all the names that have given me so much pleasure in continuing to making the YouTube videos. I never thought I'd be here because I just planned on ever making one video and here I am now. I think we're at 30 something videos. Thank you everyone, every, every, every single one. Whether you've even liked or not commented, I appreciate you because I am so much, I look into everything that happens on my channel and I thank you ever so much for everything. Really, may you all be so blessed and enjoy. Thank you. I did say I was going to show the chicken when it was cut, so you can just be sure that it was cooked. Trust me, the chicken is so moist and soft, it, it's completely cooked. Also, I just wanted to add a few comments here about a comment I received recently, which is um, a first for this channel. It was about to do with the sound of the video. Um, my religion is deeply important to me, so when I hear, when I hear such sound as 
of religious nature to my videos, I am, you know, I am at peace. The other thing is, please know that this is, channel is not a professional channel. It is a woman at home with two children that just wants to share her videos. So you may hear so many different various noises in the background and I just hope that you abide with that. Should you have any comments regarding to anything that was obstructed by the noise, please always do comment and I have enough time to let you know on what it is that you have missed out. So I still thank you for watching. I am not offended but I just wanted to put this out there. I am not a professional channel. This is a home channel with children around, guests, whoever are they. So when we make videos, we make it just around whatever we are doing. We are not going to pause, you know, terminate anything else in the household to make the videos. I thank you ever so much, everybody, for watching. And thank you again. Goodbye. God bless.